Are you listening? Hello, sports fans. My name is Dero Mark, and welcome back to the Business of Influence podcast. It's episode five of season two. And today we're having an interesting discussion with my two guests. You've seen them before on the podcast. Yes, it's Tuso and Mashudu, chatting all about, you know, creative, ne? creativity and content creation and being brand custodians. It gets to a point where you just don't know what to do. You just, it just, everything looks the same and nothing under the sun is different. And today we're chatting about how you overcome those hurdles of being a little stagnant and a little blocked. And also what you can do as a grand custodian, as a content creator, to expand your horizons and bring back creativity into our industry. Tuso, Mashiru, hey. welcome back. How's it going? Wow, thank so thank I couldn't see you guys. Like, you're so new. We were never here. <laughs> <laughs> so we work in the creative industry, right? <laughs> On a daily basis, we're asked to come up with ideas. We're in the business business of ideas. Um, we're cooking up stuff every single day. At some point, it just gets out of hand where you're dealing with different sectors on a daily basis. So you're dealing with like, I don't know, let's say a formula brand, baby formula, and maybe nappies. And then tomorrow you're dealing with um, sexy underwear or like liquor or a club or a cool music festival. First and foremost, how much does creativity and thinking out of the box really play a factor in your business? Um, in our business, <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's an element of creativity, okay. but there's something also called the creative process. Oh, yeah, you gotta okay. follow a process. Okay, yeah, you gotta follow. That sounds like an oxymoron, though, because like creativity is usually you know, it's usually all like over the place. place. And <laughs> so there are days where something is new, but this is usually in the initial phase, pitch phase, where we go, mm. "Hey guys, we need like the wildest ideas mm. you can come yeah. up with." But usually, it's it's a process. You so follow. what is the process? The process includes firstly research. Yeah. Okay. You gotta know what you're dealing with, who they are, mm. how you can help them, what are they struggling with, and then you sort of, by the minute you are done research, you sort mm. of will know mm. exactly what you need to put in place, and then you look at past campaigns. You go, okay, we once did this for this person; they had a similar issue, so let's just employ that. Oh, also, this one was also going through the same thing, and we did this. Mm. Let's go through this. Oh, but this one didn't work. So, so let's do mm. the inverse, mm. you know? Okay, so... I have a question. Mm. Savan? She's not my voice, but I have a question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So my question to Tuso was going to be, uh, and I think, um, Mashudu, you must pick up from your question, was to say, then is there a difference between creativity and innovation? Because, you see I'm going? Yeah. Because if you're saying to me the creative process, right, and you're saying that um, you go through a process, you look at what mm. you've done before, for me... That's not being creative because what you're doing is copying, copying what you do on a brand. Yes. Mm. But yes. then maybe too, so you can come in and say, is there a difference between being creative mm. and being innovative mm. where you give me something completely mm. new, mm. you know? Mm. Mm. Slightly. Okay. There's a, there's a slight difference because I agree with Mashudu. There's definitely a creative process because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, even with, with us, you know, you, you don't just go, oh, well, well, well. <laughs> you know, you need to sit and you actually need to research. Yeah. From that research, then you take that research, you analyze that research. So even if you're taking from past campaigns, mm. what you're analyzing from the past campaigns are learnings okay. and insights from there. So mm. you're not doing a copy and paste, but you're looking at what worked, what didn't work. Mm. Okay, so this worked. How do I then take it to the next level? Yeah. Right. How do I then twist it around and make it work for this brand? Mm. Because... Sometimes you're not even looking at what you're not even looking at a past campaign that's in the same sector. So you might be dealing with something in tech, but you're looking at something completely different, you know, mm -hmm. like a completely different industry. Right. But there are key learnings that you can take and bring into mm -hmm. this. Right. And try and bring something new and try and think of a new idea. So even with us back at TE, it starts with research. Once you have this research, then you get to understand, okay, so this is what I'm working with. This is what the client wants. Mm. This is what I can pull in. These are the kind of people I can then bring into a session. And it's like, guys, we've all now researched. Mm. What have we pulled out of that research? You know, mm. what, what, what ideas can come out of this? Fine, here's an idea. We go back. 
Because sometimes sitting and focusing on something for a very long time, mm. you even lose yourself. Yeah, I right? agree. So you go back, come back the next day. Then it's like, okay, guys, does this still make sense? Mm. You know, let's start poking holes. And earlier on, or in a previous episode, I spoke about diversity. Yeah. This is where it really plays yes. a huge role. Different right? voices. This is where mm. it really plays a huge role. Because then we're coming in with different voices, different mindsets, and we can really poke holes mm -hmm. in this thing. That's where the innovation comes in. Yeah. That's where the creativity comes in. Because you're really now trying to flesh this thing out and really make it make sense. If there's one thing that um, our CEO loves saying is that a creative idea or a good idea, you need to explain it or say it in one sentence. Okay. The moment you start waffling and, yeah. and mumbling and, and, mumbling on, on, and I, this and this, the then did. no. I no. see, but this this this, <laughs> this this for me applies from our side of the table as well. Mm. And I think I really, as you were speaking, I was like, actually, we should start doing that as an industry mm. practice from content creator side because mm. even if we're getting a brief, right? Let's say for uh, I don't know this diffuser, mm. and this diffuser brand has happened. You know, they, they've had campaigns before, mm. and 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 it is worthwhile going back and looking what they've done, the campaigns yep. that they've done, and analyzing them and saying, mm. okay, so these worked for them, mm. this didn't work for them. Yep. So when you're starting to then build a new creative strategy, mm. you're stopping yourself from making the same, same mistakes same. or going exactly. to and doing the same kind of content. Exactly. Because I, I wax lyrical on this channel about how like the, the financial sector is the biggest culprit for regurgitating. Mm. You've seen one insurance ad, you've seen yep. them all. Yep. And then a new one came along and I was just like, oh, I like what they're doing mm. because they've just like un and <laughs> marketed like mm. they say the name <laughs> once and then there's always like a thing but i'm always like aware of them that are oh, they're doing that mm. and now that i'm getting into now let's talk about the process right yeah. so we we've now done the research we've now got the ideas going mm. and what is the difference between wanting to create a campaign that we are all familiar with mm -hmm. and then D doing a campaign that is going to just completely rock my world. I'll give you an example, right? Mm -hmm. Like baby formula. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's baby formula. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's baby formula. You know, True. there's there's so much you can do with baby formula. Now, there's ways you can make it completely out of the box. Mm -hmm. Like I was chatting in the previous episode about how this one brand custodian was talking about a beer brand. Yeah. And he was chatting about how they had a beautiful campaign. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It was all touchy-feely, amazing. But it was just completely off the whack for what the beer campaign mm -hmm. does. The beer, cam the beer brand is all about brews on the weekend, yeah. either at rugby or at the football. And now they're doing like brews like upper class. You know, mm -hmm. it didn't work out for them. Down. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess my question is, how do you manage still giving me fresh, mm -hmm. creative content, but also not alienating me as a, as a consumer? Mm -hmm. I think um, from my perspective, um, uh, we, we live by two things. There's no such thing as a bad idea. Okay. True. But there's nothing new under the sun. Also true. You know? Yeah. So you... I've you, seen some bad ideas, Chum. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> there, there's nothing as a bad idea because sometimes a bad idea is just to catch your attention. Mm. Okay. Sometimes we want you to go, but why are they doing this? Mm. Why? Oh mm. my gosh, why would they say this? And yeah. then we've got your attention. Yeah. You know? So sometimes, really, that's what we want to do. But at the same time, there's nothing new under the sun, yeah. right? So I remember we once sat with a sports brand, yeah. and we had to come up with a brand new idea, like something that's never been done yeah. before. Yeah. Trust me, the hardest thing you'll ever have to do in your life <laughs> is come up with something that's never <laughs> been done, done before, before, yeah. You know? So you just take all those learnings from things that have been done before, and you come up with something that matches what you're trying to yeah. do. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the advertising community is doing it extremely well. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's there's certain adverts you look at and you're like, oh my gosh, that is so nice. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's also understanding South Africa is an amazing place yeah. to do things that are out the box yeah. because we're so diverse, as Tusa yeah. said. You can talk in different languages. Mm -hmm. You can say like... Um, Things that only South Africans mm. understand. You can use mm. our lingo. You can use our cultural references. You can use so many things that mm. we've got going on here that would literally just shock people's minds yeah. and make them go, why would this brand yeah. be saying away? Yeah. You know, for instance. What's like, what's that? Why yeah. would they do that? Mm. But it's sort of giving people that shock feeling. Yeah. So in, in the creative process, you're going to have to have that thing that goes shock the people. Yeah. Yeah, just give catch them one. Catch my attention. Yeah, catch them. Yeah. And you got to have that attention grabber that goes, 
why would they do that? Mm. Oh, oh my gosh, I can't believe they just did that. Yeah. And then, you know, once you get that, ah. So, so for, for me, for me, that's very interesting because what I wrote down here is that I, I'm, I, I, as you were speaking, there were ad campaigns and, and social media campaigns that caught my attention. And I was like, <laughs> I remember that one yeah. because it, it did something not novel, not new, yeah. but something that wasn't done. So I'll give you an example, yeah. right, without men- mentioning the brand. So um, I work on radio and radio, the biggest swear word you can say on radio is nothing, as in dead air, like mm. quiet, mm. silence. Mm. This radio ad was exactly that. You know, this Nothing. person comes on and says, we're not just going to chill and just keep quiet because it's lots of noise. I'm mm. pulling mm. just for 30 seconds. <laughs> and then we sat. And what do I do? And there's not even like fridge. And then he comes and says, you know, product A, product yes. B, find me here. And I'm like, yes. what they've done is take what we would not do on radio, as in not, not, nothing new. Mm. Nothing, nothing, yeah. nothing new. It's, an, it's offensive. But what they've done is they've changed how I viewed it. Mm. Where I'm like, actually, I do want a bit of silence. Yeah. I just do. let me breathe. Yeah, just because, let me breathe. Because there's too many ads, yeah. barely. So yes. I, do, yes. I do need a bit of silence. So I really enjoy that. That yeah. you, 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 you're not saying we're building something new, mm. but you're, you're really honing in on, on just give me something that I wouldn't think would apply in this situation. And sometimes it might be something, something that's completely so wrong. Fresh. And with yeah. creativity, yeah. don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. You're not going to have a great idea every day. Oh, yeah. You can have <laughs> the best idea ever, but you're not going to have it every mm. day. So yeah. don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. You know? Also, you got to know what sparks your creativity. Yeah. You know, some people's creativity is sparked oh, by I sounds. Like that. Mm. Some of them, it's your, if I take a walk, I'm going to mm. see something. Definitely. Mm. Like, I'm definitely. Gonna. Some of them is, if I go back to my mom's house, mm. I know she's going to say something about mm. that's going to go, mm. ah, man, mm. Yazina could use this. Because what we tend to do is we sit in an office and we go, boardroom, everyone, five minutes. Okay, good Kay, idea. Guys, <laughs> this is what's happening. We White need a good board. idea. <laughs> So yeah. I'm writing, yes, I'm writing now. Yeah. And you're like, now? And they're like, yes, now. What What do you think we can do? Yeah. And you're like, I don't, I, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know. But you see, what I'm what I'm really getting from this, and, and just I wanted to jump on this, yeah. um, is uh, the lesson for me here, here is that sometimes the creative process is um, really sitting back and saying, okay, what are we doing? Mm. What, 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 what has been done before by looking at the history mm. and the research and then going, okay, what would what would really be unnatural, mm. uncomfortable, mm. Um, not done before? Yeah. Um, would be would raise an eyebrow whether it's of intrigue or mm. dissent, like ha ah, we don't do that, yeah. or why yeah. would he do that? Yeah. You know, and and then having those go up, and then going okay, now which of these will take mm. in? Because mm. I'm I'm literally thinking of when I did a content piece recently, and I was like, what would be the least compatible thing? Mm to what did that's happening there. Mm. Let me mm. do that so that when you're watching, you're going, Go oh, up. well, now I'm yeah. here. Might as well stick. <laughs> yeah. But how much of the the creative space, uh, of the creative process is also mm. then um, really deep diving into who will consume this product? So I'll mm. give you an example, mm-hmm. right? My grandmother does not want to know that her rice brand is mm. now coming in a new vacuum sealed yes. popping open. She yes. just wants to know it looks the same yes. and that maybe it like, the same the same. you know, the same. in fact, she wants an ad reassuring yeah. her that the rice is the same yeah, rice she, she had 40 years ago. Cup <laughs> and it's going to grow in the pot and you that's know? it. <laughs> so how much is uh, understanding and um, who you're talking to informing how much yes. of the creativity you can bring in. Definitely a lot. Definitely a lot. Because, um, I mean, even for me, it goes back just a couple of steps as well um, to say, what are we trying to achieve? Yeah. Right. Because once you know what you're trying to achieve and you know who you're trying to mm. talk to, then you can put the two mm. together. You know, one of the things that we always say to you is that um, our USP, one of them, is that we know how to tell the story, but we also know what vehicle to use. Oh, I and like that. who to tell it okay. to, right? Mm. Okay. So it goes back to what you were saying. Are we writing it down? <laughs> what vehicle to use? <laughs> what story are we telling? What story are we telling? Mm. And what, what vehicle, vehicle are we... Are we using? Mm. And then who are we telling it to? So masterclass, right? y'all. <laughs> so once you have all of these three things, then you're done. Yeah. You know, then you don't have to... Then you're not going to get it wrong, yeah. so to speak. You know, then you'll, you'll, you'll nail it, right? Because then you'll do something suitable for your grant. Then you'll do something suitable for mm. what you do. But it's still the same brand. Yeah. You're still talking to the right people, yeah. right? Because, I mean, brands evolve, you know, similar to what you said earlier with people evolving, brands also evolve. 
right? So one day I'm talking to you. The next day, actually, I want to talk to my shooter, mm. you know? But I still want to keep you, Leroy, because yeah. I value you, right? And I don't want you to forget that I'm still here for yeah. you. So I'll still talk to you, but I'll also... You know, I, want, I want to add my shooter onto my the My shooter combo. will be in yeah. the WhatsApp group as well, right? So that also sparks new ideas, <sighs> right? Because we're trying to talk to new people as well. But yeah. now, oh, sorry, 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 just to add a little bit. Mm. So instead of also a micro, going in on the microscope on we, we are looking specifically at males that are this age and this age yeah. and this age. Yeah. Just think about humans in general. Yeah. Because most of the ideas of what we come up with is just based on humans in general. Yeah. Like, for instance, I'll give you an example with energy drinks. Humans everywhere on, the, on, on planet Earth think that if something doesn't taste nice, it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah like yeah. It, it's, it's going to give me one. And surely an energy yeah. drink should not be like, no. like the tastiest. And because energy, the most energy, energy is energy hard. Is, energy is hard. <laughs> energy is, so if we make an energy drink, we need to give it that taste where you go, <laughs> mm, <laughs> yes, um, yeah, now I can mm. go to the gym. Yeah. Now I can work three more hours. Probably there isn't even any energy in there, but just the taste alone mm. as a normal human being yeah. makes you go, this, this is, is an energy but, but, but you see, this yes. is what, I, what I'm trying to say, that you you are, are, are zoning in on what um, I think Tusa did very well in explaining that um, even the, the, the people who are speaking to, the LSM of saying we're talking to people from Ranbek mm. and Senti, yeah. that's gone anymore. That's gone. We're now oh. doing is we're, we're formulating the viewer, listener, consumer mm. and saying, okay, Savan is a black girl who listens mm. to rock, yeah. but she listens to like indie rock. Yeah. Now we're really going in and molding mm. the parameters and mm. going really fast so that when we start talking, we go, yeah. Because yeah. what we you said you. now, mm. we get, yeah. it's about... Getting you. Yeah, it's just getting you. We get you. We get you. <sighs> okay, but now <laughs> there's, there's, there's vehicles. So we're going to go back to vehicles too. Mm. So because the vehicles that we use in content creation, for instance, are Tammy's favorite, getting ready with me's and unboxings mm. as an example. Mm. Ne? Mm. And, <laughs> <laughs> and there's also, um, because of just the nature of the, of the platforms that we use, there's yeah. things that work in those platforms and they become like, like standard. Mm. So I'll give you an example. I still can't fathom going live on X. Mm. Going live mm. must be visual. I must be able to see yes. where mm. you are. That's why it's so, live. so exactly. <laughs> so it makes sense to me why it happens on Instagram. It yes. makes sense to me why it happens on Facebook to a certain degree, and definitely mm. makes sense to me why TikTok. Yeah. All right. But it just doesn't work on, on X, in mm. my opinion. How do you know that in your wanting to be one current, mm. okay, and creative, that what you're employing is not a fad, but it's actually a game changer. Mm. A fad for me is when we all did those don't rush challenges, you know, or like a challenger, TikTok, or whatever, mm. Mm. and or like filtering everything, mm. you know. And then that was a fad. But what's happened in the industry is we have to agree, guys, that there is an element of, Content creators, you must have super high quality. Yeah. Mm. That that that's not a, a, a question anymore. Yeah. Even on TikTok, the standard. The standard, <laughs> the standard yeah. it, it was one of those. Hey, and now it's yes, like we have to no. have these. So how do we navigate being part of the fad, mm. and then and being seen as oh you're in it, mm. and then but also making sure that we're not you know. Not yeah. Like a, mm. So interestingly, interestingly, enough, interestingly. Like, like interestingly <laughs> enough. Being a game changer or trending, yeah. we always talk about it as trending. Yeah. Yes. It's never your decision. Uh, okay. Trending is never your decision. Trending is literally followers, followers going, followers. actually, guys, did you see what Leo yeah. is doing? So everyone that's ever trended did not intend to trade. Yeah. It was just people going, actually. Yeah. You know? So now that you have that insight, right, as a content creator, as an influencer, you got to get yourself in the right conversations. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So your job is not to necessarily create the most game-changing. Obviously, your content has to be unique. It has mm, to be mm, all that. Mm. But if you can get your content in the right conversations, mm. on the right day when mm. all the right things are happening, you're probably going to trend and you're probably going to be a game-changer. So you don't need to, to, when you're creating your content, then intend for it to be trendy and, and, and crazy. But I think what you are saying earlier on about like working out the research industry mm. practice, then looking at what has worked before, then seeing how you can do yes. it differently, then applying your mind a bit more, that causes you to, to trend, yeah. even mm. though it, was, it can never be your it own doing. It can never be your, your own social, doing. Yeah. Social, so, listening. Yeah. social listening. Social yeah. listening. Please explain that, social listening for us. That's exactly what, it, what mm -hmm. it is, right? 
to, to Mashiru's point, once you can see, oh, okay, so this is happening, how do I then play into that space, okay. right? And then people pick that up. Somebody picks it up, somebody picks it up, then yeah. you start trending. Yeah. Meanwhile, you didn't even start <laughs> that conversation. <laughs> you know, you saw Mashiru saying, oh, yeah. okay, guys, let's do this. And you're like, hmm, okay, I can add a bit of spice in yeah. there. I can add a bit of Leroy in there. And then you start trending. So we, we as, as, as content creators... Um, what needs to happen is people need to be alive mm. to opportunities. Mm. You, know? you need to be in the right spaces to have your finger on the pulse, to be alive to what's happening out there. Then you pick it up quickly because social media is quite fast. fast yeah. right? it's, it's very fast. And if but, you miss it, it's, it's, it, but it's gone. Then explain to me too so how it happens that we are working with content um, uh, creators who go to say, I'll, I'll use events mm. because they're the, the low-hanging fruit. And they get there and they go, wow, that was a catastrophe because we get there and seemingly even the brand custodians mm -hmm. don't seem to know what happened there. There was, a, there was a big thing that was happening with a particular beauty brand where everyone left going, what the hell? What? D did we? What? Did you also think it was? Mm. And then Twitter went to buzz and they were trending. Mm. <laughs> for all the wrong reasons. For all the wrong reasons. Yeah, so my point is, where, reason. where, how do we then justify those people who seemingly there is the information there, mm. but who still get it so catastrophically wrong? Is it the issue of diversity again? Is it an issue it's of... Probably, yes. It's probably the issue of diversity. I mean, that, that then falls on us. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. honestly then falls on us. Then we didn't do our homework. Yeah. We didn't do our due diligence. You yeah. know? We didn't do the right things. We didn't tick the boxes. Mm. Because you can't be inviting people into this event and then there's nothing happening. Mm. You know, or, or it's just crickets and people are not understanding and things are not connecting. You know, like they're there, but they don't even know why they're mm. there. You yourselves are now starting to look stunned. You know, yeah. then you've lost an opportunity to actually grab people's attention, to actually get the correct messaging mm, out there. Mm. So such things, they really sit with us. Yeah. You know, as brand custodians, as agencies, that's where we get it wrong. But, but okay, so then we, we go to the event, right? And the opposite mm. happens. We get there and there was like things from the ceiling. And I go there and I'm like, yo, I had, I had me a time, yes. right? Because there's one, there's a part of going to an event and enjoying it. And there's mm. a part of an event where you're going, that was so wow you know and we speak about so a 10 different. yeah you yes. know and i know in the tech space it's a little easier to do because they've got the resources mm. on hand but what do we then do because sometimes you find that we 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 put so much uh intention in making it a mind-blowing event mm. slash campaign that we almost too creative or too innovative yeah. um when is too much innovation happening when are we innovating too much when are we being creative when it stops being authentic oh That's and it. when you can't explain it in one line there we go <laughs> done when you I can't mean, explain it in one when, line when it stops being authentic guys when you're now overthinking it and there's too much yeah no. but then the pressure from from client always and i find this with clients who i've dealt with who aren't necessarily from our and younger generations mm. where they are not used to interacting. The baby boomers are the biggest culprits. Mm. Um, and our generation, our generation, I mean, millenni the millennials. The way generation. Yeah, mm. yeah. We, no, it's always been <laughs> done yeah. thus. This is how it's done. Mm. Because yeah. I find that they, they come to, to you and they almost want, uh, just fix it, just fix mm. it. I, I, I go back to these particular financial sector guys mm. because shame, I, and I know I'm, I'm abusing them, but um, I never, <laughs> I never name them because it's a sector that I always find yeah. it's because it's so results driven mm. in everywhere else. Mm. Their marketing department is almost constrained yeah. mm -hmm. um, to be able to do anything about it. But then you find that like you've got a marketing manager who's still of the days of old who says, guys, mm. what do you mean we need to do this old thing? Mm. And then sometimes you get like the opposite where you're going exactly. to a bank and the bank is like, or oh, this insurance thing is giving you this audiovisual mm. experience with like VR, like, oh, and you're going, guningi. <laughs> guningi, guningi, guningi. Yes. can you have too much innovation, or is it when the innovation is misplaced? Mm. So the innovation for the financial mm. sector is different, or the innovation for like, like fast food sector is different. Yeah. You know, when do we have way too much innovation? But also, your your client wants you to mm. trend. But at the end How of the day, that? as we said, dude, like it's it's all about understanding why you're doing mm. something. Yeah. Like understand why. Mm. Yeah. Like if you're gonna host an event as a brand, why are you why? doing it? Yep. Why are you doing it? Well, brand A did it. We need to be on the pulse, guys. You can't miss on the boat. You can't do it for that. You gotta understand internally why do we mm. need to do this mm. thing? Mm. 
why do we like as as us why do we need to do mm. this? How does it make sense like how does it make sense <laughs> mm. if it makes sense because then you've got a platform for in, for influencers to come mm. in go live make mm. you trained tell the story about how beautiful your brand yeah. is then go for it but yeah. understand guti if you want to do that you got to do it the right do way mm. you know if you want a place where people can just consume your brand yeah. cuz other brands just want hey guys i want a space where everyone's just drinking this one thing mm. And it must be my brand. And enjoying this mm. thing. Oh, then go for mm. it. But understand that you can't run out of stock and you yeah. can't, it can't be something that people don't enjoy. Yeah. And you, people can't be missing the fun mm. element. Yeah. Dude, South Africa is a wonderful place, <sighs> especially in the event <laughs> scene and all of that. Because we're so diverse. Yeah. There's so many ways to touch South I, Africa. I had a, I had a, There's can so I, many yep. ways can to I, touch us. Can I preach? Yeah. Because mm. I had an incident. Mm. I, had, I, had, I had an incident. I see you, Savan. I do. I had an incident um, <laughs> and we went to this particular brand mm -hmm. thing because okay. I can't name what it was because okay. you, mm -hmm. you guys will know what it is. And I was whelmed over. Okay. Sure. It, but okay. in not the pleasant way. Oh, um, right. And you know what mm. was wrong? The people who are doing it were so in love with the product. They forgot that we are not them. Uh, so I've got skin in the game because I'm a consumer. Yeah. But when you, so, 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 you know, at, at, at Style ID, for mm. instance, we've got a wonderful innovation department mm -hmm. where they are able to give us really good data yes. on everything. And that tickles me pink. Mm -hmm. That's my stuff, yes. right? So sometimes I get excited yes. about that. And then someone will say to you, oh, like, oh okay. okay. But I'm like, oh, you don't get what it <laughs> yes. does for us in our industry. Mm. So I went means. to this event, what it means to our industry. But we got to this event and I was like, yo, yo, yo. And as a result, everything mm. that followed just... Didn't, yeah. didn't, went didn't, 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 didn't went over my head. And I think a part of it was because they over-innovated yeah. to such a point that they forgot the human element, mm. that they humans had to be essence. in the room mm. and enjoy this mm. thing. And mm. we were ended up being quite mm. tired. It's like one of those weddings where there's just speech <laughs> after speech and we haven't eaten Mara speech after speech. Because after I want you you're sitting there like, so, guys, <laughs> like, in, I I'm appreciate no Mama Hulu now. and everyone, but I, and, I need and, to And, and funny enough, the best, wedding, really the, the best wedding I went to had four speeches and we ate cake after vows. Yeah. Like, Thank I was you. just like, this that is so amazing. Done. So my point is then trying to get to, how do you get clients to understand that even when they don't understand an idea because they're so consumed in their world, right? Yeah. How do you say to them, Listen, we got it. We got it. And and because you asked them to say to 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 trust you with yes. a lot, reputation, yes. the financial health of the business yes. often, and also the budget they're giving you. How do you say to the client, we got you? Uh, the word that you used, that's exactly <laughs> what I was gonna say. It's a trust thing. Yeah. It's really a, a, a trust thing. Um, you know, once once you have a once you win a pitch, yeah, that's already one foot in the door, so mm. to speak, right? So once you have the campaign or once you have a client within your doors, they've already trusted you mm. to an extent. Now, when something needs to happen, it's a, but Leroy, you've trusted me with your yeah. client. Like we work with a lot of international clients. They're not here. Yeah. We are their ears, eyes, everything mm, on the ground. Mm. They don't know SA. Mm. They don't, like you were saying, Mashu, yeah. the cultural... It's so they different. Don't they don't all know all of so that, different. right? They're sitting somewhere, <laughs> you know, in, in a London office, and they don't understand. Mm. So they're trusting us to say that, hey, I get it. Back home, that's what you do. Mm. But back here, or rather down here, this is how we do things. Mm. So you, you really need to build that trust, you know, with your client. And even with the financials, all of those, you know, the oldies, the, I've been there. Yeah. Where it's like, this is how we do it. It's like, fine, good and well, this is how you do it. But if we do it like this, this is it's what like you're going to get. get. Out. But if we do it like this, you know, this is what you're going to get. And out. for me... And this is what we want to actually... And, and that for me goes back into then how you innovate in even when you're hamstrung by your your client. And I think maybe to wrap it up, that the strategy really for creative block is never that there's creative block, is that you don't have a well-established creative process mm -hmm. that takes into consideration mm -hmm. all the things that you need to do. Yep. And every creative process must start with understanding the brand mm -hmm. and then looking at the history of what they've done Definitely. similar mm -hmm. and then having the conversation to get them to mm. trust your expertise, mm. whether yeah. you're a content creator yep. or a, a, a brand custodian yep. to say, listen. And sometimes that means going back and saying, listen, when we got Mashudu mm. brand A, he was like this. Mm. Look where we've gone with yes. them. Trust that we understand yes. this and, and having 
those. So I, I'm loving that there's a bit of a, there's a standardization even in the creativity that we don't just go and create for no reason. Yeah, and that's yeah. why it's so important to also document the journey. Document. Even as a creator and influencer, mm. document the journey. Mm. Because uh, a lot of people don't even know how you went from 5,000 followers to mm. 200,000. Yeah. Document it. Have something you can show the Muti. Guys, in 2016, mm. I was here. Mm. This is what I was doing. I was playing around with this type of content. Yeah. I was this person. Now, fast, fast forward 10, 15 years later, mm. I'm this person. Mm. Yeah. And this is what I do. And this is what I've come to. Yeah. And this is what I've realized. Mm. Yeah. So always document the process. Mm. Whether you're a client, whether you're a company, whether you're an influencer, mm. document it. The one thing that you'll never regret doing is putting things down okay, to so. show people and go, yes. hey, I was once here. And also yep. to remind yourself. Yeah, and to yeah. remind yep. yourself. Hey, yeah. look like where we come from. Mm. Come. You know, mm. can't believe I used to like this. You know, <laughs> yeah. and I used to do this. You should, so. you should, you should see my Instagram. Those are like oh, Facebook wow. memories. Instagram is a great place to document. 2002 stuff. was yeah. a wild time, my friend. Let me <laughs> tell you. Between 2012 <laughs> was a wild time. Do you saw your parting shot? I mean, guys, let's understand who we are. Mm. Let's understand who we are. Let's 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 stay authentic. Yeah. You know, then it's it makes it easier, mm. you know, to tell our stories. It makes it easier to fight the good fight yeah. know, in the boardrooms. It makes it easier for us to go. Okay, this is who I am. Yeah. This is what I'm going to push for. This is the brand I'm going to associate with. And then on the flip side, then the brand custodian can just go, okay, this is mm. Leroy, mm. you know, and this is what Leroy can do, mm. you know, and guys, this is what's going to work. This is what's not going to work. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a business. It's a, it's, it really is a business. Really and is. you you employ yeah, it, it as you would any business. You've got your industry practices. You've got your internal governance mm. systems. You've got your internal memories and institutional memories so that mm. When you do get a new set of work that comes in, whether you're a content creator or you are, you know, pitching for work as a brand custodian, mm. you know where you've come from and what things you have in your arsenal already that you can use and even flex with your client and say, this is what we've done and this is the return of investment that we've had. So for me, this has been a very educational two episodes. <laughs> I hope you found it as educational. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend and the postman that the business influence was in the house. And for me, Lee Remark, I'll see you next time. And who knows, maybe Tammy will bring us something nice. <laughs> bye bye. Cheerio. Are you listening? Damn.